Hey guys, welcome back to Procognition. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Android 11 developer preview. Now it's been released for the Google Pixel phones and those are the ones that are supported. They recommend you don't install this. Wait for the developer beta if you're interested in testing it out. But for now, we're just gonna be talking about the rumors and what people have confirmed that's gonna be coming with this update. So let's jump right in. Just like always, before we begin the video, if you guys are interested in content just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the post bell notification as well so that you can watch more videos just like this. So let's just start by talking about the UI because that's what you'll be looking at first. There aren't very many UI changes from what we've seen so far, but there are a lot of major changes coming in that are something to be excited about. So the major changes that we're gonna be talking about are the user interface, the messaging, the connectivity and the scoped storage is what it's called. So let's just jump right in and talk about each of these things and show you what it looks like. So let's start by talking about the UI. If you guys watched this video we made earlier, I'm gonna link it up somewhere here, where we talked about how you can conserve your battery power, dark mode is the way to go. Now Android 11 is introducing dark mode scheduled for all devices. So what this is gonna allow you to do, in addition to turning on your dark mode across all devices, is also have it timed so that you can schedule it on and off to match the daytime and the nighttime in real life. So it's gonna feel very interactive with the environment around you, which is really great. Another use for the dark mode would be obviously to save your battery power and conserve it so you can turn it on endlessly, which is what I do as well. Next under the UI, we're gonna have screen record. Now the previous version of Android, which is the Android 10, did have a screen recorder, but it wasn't as great. And also you would be relying on third party apps way more than you need to. It should be built in. And with this version of Android, it's going to be built in and it's gonna be a lot better. From what we've seen, you just click on the button within the notifications and it starts recording within three seconds, shows you a little logo right there at the top. And it just looks pretty minimalistic, very non-intrusive, looks pretty nice. So you can record everything. We don't know about the settings individually yet because this is still the developer's preview. You might be having more control over your audio and what sound you're recording and which section of the screen to record. So that will be something to look at as well. Another minimal feature in the UI, which is very interesting, is that when you share a picture or a file using the press and hold share, you know what I'm talking about? And it pops up all these other apps you can share using, you're now allowed to pin the apps that you use the most. So if you share using AirDroid or Messenger or WhatsApp, so you can pin those to the top so you don't need to hunt for them and you'll always use those repeatedly, which saves a lot of time and is a lot more convenient. The last feature in the UI is gonna be the do not disturb feature. So this has been around for a while, except they've optimized it really well now. So when you're recording videos or photos, it's not gonna disturb you with those notifications while you're doing that with the sounds or alerts. In addition to that, you can also turn on or off people or groups of people that can pass through the do not disturb so you can get alerted for those specific people. So if you don't want your friends to message you while you're doing something, you can turn that on. But if you want your best friend to message you, he'll slide through the do not disturb anyway, which is really great. When it comes to the messages, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Everyone knows the Facebook Messenger app has those bubbles that pop up everywhere. Those really annoying pop, 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 bubbles. But yeah, so those bubbles are gonna work out for you because this version of Android is gonna support that across majority of the messaging softwares. So as of now for the Android 11 update, it's only the message app, which is built into the phone, but apparently with future updates, it might support things like WhatsApp and what else do you use? Telegram, all those other apps as well. So this is very nice because if you're doing something on your phone and you wanna continue doing other things while being able to reply to your messages, instead of split screening and taking all that RAM power, you can just have those bubbles pop up, reply to message, close it back again, here and there. So it's, it's really great. So you can multitask really well now. So another update within the messenger itself is the fact that you can reply using pictures right from the notification shade itself. So if you wanna reply using a picture, all you do is scroll down, find the message, expand, why am I doing the sound again? Expand the, the message and you can paste the picture within there. Uh, a lot of people tried it in the developer preview. It doesn't work really well as of now because it's still in testing, but the final release is probably gonna be very well implemented and you can send memes and GIFs right there through your notification shade without stopping whatever else you're doing. So security, this is something a lot of people care about. Android users specifically, me, myself included, uh, security is always a concern because things use your information in the background, like location services and all that stuff. So with this update on Android 11, permissions and privacy and security is being taken a lot more seriously. Every time you launch an app, you're presented with the option to allow these permissions for once and only once, 
or only while you're using the app or not at all. So this is a lot more secure like the iPhone does it. So every time you launch an app, it's gonna ask you for these things and you can choose which one you wanna use. So if it's an app that wants to use it in the background, they're gonna have to ask permission from Google and get their verification for the Play Store. So that's, that's a very good step towards making your phone a lot more secure. So when it comes to connectivity, these are the major improvements that we've seen. 5G support, we know all smartphones are gonna come out with 5G in the future, but what this update allows you is that it takes maximum advantage of the API that lets you get the maximum speed out of the 5G connectivity for your device itself. So this software is basically gonna get the maximum enhancement for the 5G connectivity and deliver that to you while you're browsing the internet using 5G. So another thing that comes with the connectivity is going to be your Bluetooth connectivity while turning on the airplane mode. So this allows you to keep your Bluetooth turned on even if you turn on the airplane mode. A problem that I faced all the time was when I would get on the plane and I would be using wireless earphones or my smartwatch when I would turn on the airplane mode, all of them would disconnect and I would just have to turn it on manually. So this update basically just saves you that step and keeps your Bluetooth devices connected even if you turn on the airplane mode. Lastly, we talked about the scoop storage thing. We're not entirely sure what this means, but based on this concept, you're gonna be able to create an ulterior secondary folder, which is what your phone is gonna to use to access data rather than you having to grant permission every single time for an application. So what this is gonna do is ensure privacy without disturbing you over and over again. And also it's gonna be a lot faster to retrieve that information. Sort of like cache files, I guess, that accesses information whenever you need it. And it's gonna be a lot faster for you to be able to get your information. So that's about it. Now these are all still under the developer's preview and they're subject to changes in the future. Android might be removing some of these or adding some of these based on the tests that we conduct. And especially when it comes to the beta stages, we'll actually understand which of these are gonna stay and which are gonna be thrown out. Now, if you're interested in installing this on your Google Pixel phone, we will link a link below where you can try all these features out for yourself but it's recommended you wait at least for the beta stages, not the developer's preview. So that's about it guys. We really hope you enjoyed this update video and this was beneficial to you, someone who's looking to update their phone from 10 to 11 and basically just enjoy all these cool new features. The greatest thing about this is that you're not gonna need third-party apps for a majority of these features so you can delete that cluster of apps that you have and have it built in natively. So thank you guys again for watching this video and we'll see you again in the next one. Wait. Okay, now I'm done.